If you've been following this series, you by now have a working Linux installation and have Mail and Calendar set up. But you use iCloud, and iCloud offers much more than just Mail and Calendar. You have Notes, Reminders, the iWork suite with Pages, Numbers and Keynotes, Find My, iCloud Drive and so on. Can we get that stuff working on Linux? Yes, yes we can, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how. Now, one thing you should note is that although we are going to manage to access all our iCloud stuff from Linux, we are going to have to do that using web apps. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on before you just quit this video. I don't mean web apps in your browser. I mean web apps that are on your system behave a lot like normal applications and crucially that you only need to log into once. Okay, so it may not be a perfect solution. We will never have a perfect solution until Apple decides to open their ecosystem. Spoiler alert, that's never going to happen. But for now, this is the best we can do. So let's get started. So we're going to using the Apple provided web applications, but rather than having them all in a browser, which is confusing because you have a bunch of tabs and you have to stay switching between them, we're going to make them look as close to native apps as possible while still being web apps. Not ideal, but that's what we have. So the package that you'll need is this one here. Uh, it's called iCloud for Linux. And what this basically does is it creates a bunch of web apps on your desktop, which you can access just like normal apps, uh, with access to the web versions of the iCloud software. That includes calendars, contacts, drive, find my uh, keynote numbers, pages, iCloud photos, reminders, notes, and even mail. Now, you're probably not, not going to want to use these for mail and calendars. Uh, check out my previous video for instructions on how to get that set up properly on Linux. But for all of the other stuff, frankly, there is no other way. Apple doesn't make it easy. And so this is the best we're going to get. Now, iCloud for Linux is provided as a snap. Uh, that's one way to install packages on your Linux system. If you're using Ubuntu, you can just visit this link. Uh, link will be down in the video description as usual. Click install and you're done. But if you're not using Ubuntu, then you will need to enable Snap support on your system. For example, in my case, I'm using Fedora, which doesn't come with Snaps by default. Luckily, it's easy to get them working. So you'll need to go to your Activities Overview and open a terminal. Now, once you're here, you'll want to run the command to enable Snaps. And that's pretty easy. It's sudo dnf install snapd. Enter. Now, you will be asked for a, your account password here, so go ahead and type that. And uh, after fetching some updates, it will ask you to confirm whether you actually want to install Snap. And I will say Y to confirm and press Enter. And this will set up everything you need to be able to install Snaps on your system, including iCloud for Linux, which is the one we're actually going to install. Okay, so that's installed. So next, we can go ahead and install iCloud for Linux. To do that, we'll say sudo snap install iCloud dash for dash Linux. Command will be down in the description. But as you can see, since we've just installed snap, we're getting this error too early for operation. Now, this is normal. I wanted to show you this error. It happens when you've just installed snap. So you may need to wait a few moments for Snap to do its thing, okay, uh, initialize its database or whatever, and then try the command again later on to see uh, that whether it works. So I'm going to try it again now. I'll press the up key, I'll press enter. And as you can see now, the second time, it's working just fine. It's downloading the package, and soon it will be installed. Okay, a couple of minutes later, and Snap for Linux has now installed. We're ready with the terminal. We can type exit to get out of here. So hopefully now we should find a bunch of new icons in our activities overview. So I'm going to go to activities and click on show apps. And as you can see, there is nothing here. Now this, unless you're using Ubuntu or an officially supported distribution uh, with Snap, that tends to happen. But what you can do is log out and log back in again. So I'm just going to go here. I'm going to click on the power icon and then I'm going to say log out. And then I'm just going to log back in. Okay, so now if I go to activities and I click show all apps, 
yeah, you can see there's an arrow here. And if I go here, there is all of our iCloud goodness. Um, so what you need to do now that you have this is to just pick an app and log into it. Okay. So I'm going to actually pick uh, reminders since that's one of the things I use most. Here it is, iCloud reminders. So you'll need to click on it. Now, obviously, since this is the first time we're launching this app, uh, we're going to have to sign in. Also, depending on your version of Linux, you're also going to get these messages here where it says it looks like iCloud for Linux crashed. It hasn't crashed, okay? It just, for some reason, displays that message. Remember, guys, this is this is sort of a hacky workaround, so it's, it's, it's incredible that it's working at all. Anyway, so now what we're going to have to do is sign in, all right? So I'll need to enter my Apple ID. Now, when you do this, uh, make sure that when you're done, you then click on keep me signed in, okay? Because that will be important going forward. So you don't have to stay signing in every time. Okay, and then obviously here we need to enter our iCloud password. Okay, so you'll need to uh, fill that in. Now, normally that will be uh, all that is required. Okay, but obviously since this is the first time we're using iCloud from our device, uh, we're going to get a security prompt, especially if you have two-factor authentication enabled. Okay, so as you can see on my Mac here, uh, I get a two-factor prompt. I'm going to click allow, and then I get a code, which I need to enter in here, 6793.87. And that's it. Okay, you we will also need to make sure you click trust this browser. Now, normally that would be it, but if you have enabled advanced data protection on your iCloud account, which I have, uh, you don't just get instant access. Okay. As you can see here, we get this prompt getting access. Now, again, you will only get this prompt if you've enabled advanced data protection on your account as I have. Okay. Now, what's going to happen is that it's going to get access from your account. And as you can see, reminders has loaded. In this case, it's just loaded straight away, which is kind of odd, but normally you're going to get a prompt on your phone where you have to approve uh, the device getting access. Anyway, the first time the app loads, it might take a little longer. You can see it's taking quite a while just to display my reminders. But again, that's probably because of the whole advanced data protection stuff that I have. Trust me, though, it does eventually load your items. And there we go. Reminders has loaded. And as you can see, I can browse through them just as if I were using the web application. OK, and I can just basically tick them, add new reminders and use them from here. But that's just reminders. I hear you say, what about all the remaining apps? Well, that's what iCloud for Linux does. So if we go back into the activities view, uh, I can now access something else. For example, iCloud Drive, which has its icon here. OK, so I'm going to go to iCloud Drive. Now, the nice thing about iCloud for Linux is that since I've signed into one of the apps, I don't have to sign in to the others. Okay, so as long as I have, uh, in my case, my phone nearby, as you can see, it just signs in straight away. Okay, and I can access my files from here, recently deleted, downloads, and so on. So this is the nice thing about iCloud for Linux. You only need to sign in once and you're automatically signed in to all the other apps. Let's try something else. For example, let's try one of the iWork suites, uh, like uh, Pages, for example. Again, the app loads. As you can see, no sign-in required, getting access, and then voila, I have Pages available, and I can start using it just here. And actually, Apple has made quite a few improvements in its uh, Pages app, as, as well as Numbers and Keynote, to do, especially in the web version. So they're, they're well, they're not entirely feature complete, but they're, you know, they're there. So let's just look at what we got access to. So we got iCloud Drive, find my friend, find my iPhone, Keynote and Mail. And then we also got notes, numbers, pages, photos, reminders. Yeah, that's basically it. I'm just going to quickly try photos here, since obviously that's going to be a big deal. Again, it's getting access. And as you can see here, my photos have loaded and I can view them with no problem at all. Okay, so, yep. All right, obviously, the first time you load this, it has to cache all your photos, so that may take a while, but then once you're there, you get the familiar user interface of using iCloud Photos. So, you know, that's pretty cool. And that's all great, but I hear you say, what about Apple Music? 
Well, for Apple Music, we're actually pretty well served because a custom open source client has been made for Apple Music. Now, this kind of reveals something here. So if, if an open source client for iCloud Music is available, why not notes, reminders, and so on? Well, that's Apple's fault because Apple wants you to be able to listen to your music on any device, whether that's a Mac, a PC, or even an Android device. So they have an open API that developers can use to access it. But notes and reminders, uh-uh, that's only in the Mac walled garden. And so that's why, unfortunately, there are no apps that integrate with those services. We have one for Apple Music, so I guess we'll take what we can get. So again, go to the software center of your distribution of choice. And from here, you will want to search for an app called Cider. Now, as you can see, in my case, it is not included in the software center, which is unfortunate. Now, if you are using an Intel or AMD CPU, it will open up here. You can just install it and you're sorted. But... If you're using an ARM-based processor like I am, I'm on Apple M1 here, unfortunately, CIDR is not compatible with M1 at this time, which means you're dead out of luck. So unfortunately, I am dead out of luck and I cannot actually install CIDR here. That being said, this is what uh, CIDR looks like. As you can see, you have a home screen with all your playlists and mixes you're recently added. Uh, and as you can see here, it's a very nice app and it looks the same on Windows, Mac and Linux, which is a nice change. Everything will be here and will synchronize with your other devices. So when you make changes to your playlists, for example, they will still show up here. And you can see there's albums, videos, your podcasts, obviously your playlists will be here and so on. And it syncs pretty fast. So give Cider a try. So there you go. You now have access to most of your iCloud stuff on Linux. Now in an ideal world, if you're really committed to Linux, you would switch to something else, an open source provider, or at least a provider using standards. Um, like Nextcloud, for example, and I might make a video series about getting Nextcloud installed uh, sometime in the future. Uh, there's also a card up here somewhere where you can see my previous video on setting up your own Nextcloud server from scratch. But for many people, that's not an option. I use iCloud for work. I use iCloud at home because all my photos go there and more importantly, my wife's photos go there. So I can't just up end my life and switch to another cloud provider, okay? The ecosystem really locks you in. So, yeah. But if you are interested in the next cloud and more of this Linux road test series, please make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and also because it really helps the channel. Until next time, thanks for watching.